What's up, everybody? Welcome back to uh, the Blue River Bow Hunting Podcast, episode sixty-seven. Uh, you know, we we it had been a while since we had uh, been behind the mic, and me and Adam jumped on and got this thing cranked back off. But uh, you know, I'm gonna try to pump out as many episodes as I can going forward in the off season. Have a lot of cool people on, but uh, tonight's guest is a returning guest. You may be like number one as far as uh, appearances on the yes, show but uh jake, <laughs> jake collette from uh blue collar whitetails up uh up in the fort wayne area what's going on dude no oh, not too much you uh you hit me up today and it sounded like a good thing to do because uh, like like you were saying earlier this is a tough time of year you know um all the weekend warriors for shotgun season are probably already chasing ducks or moving on to the next thing but I know you and I are still thinking about deer, so. Oh, absolutely. I was actually just texting somebody. Uh, I wouldn't say begging, but I was saying, hey, man, if you uh, if you can help a brother out, take me to the deer reduction zone. I don't have oh, that. Yeah. I don't have that, that pleasure of having that. And uh, this guy right here wants to shoot another deer really, really bad. <laughs> it's, it's a, it's a tough, tough time of year. Tough time of year. I went uh, Saturday evening after work. I worked Saturday. Uh, we had a bunch of does, like I don't know, maybe eight to ten does in the in this little corn uh, corn field in between two sets of woods. So it'd been like it it may be like eighty ninety yards across. So it's like almost just big enough to get like one or two passes through the combine through there. And I was <laughs> like, dude, let's go and try to take a doe uh with our bows you know and just to you know get some more footage and have fun you know that's what yeah. deer hunting's about too you know going out there and having fun of course you know we had them in there that morning even then we go and don't see anything and uh and i was like well let's let's try it again let's try sunday morning nope didn't see a deer one uh, so i'm still i'm on, I'm on the struggle bus i want to shoot another deer pretty bad oh yeah i only shot one i only shot my buck this year this is that's the only deer i i passed on a lot of does um i wanted to take a doe with my bow early we always say that on this podcast mm -hmm. and adam but uh i just it's not that i didn't have the opportunity um i just didn't do it there was a couple times where i was just like caught up in the moment and watching these does play around i was like you know just live another day i guess because you know yeah. i don't I, I just didn't really feel like messing with it really i, I passed one with spots like the second day of reduction and i was like all right i'm gonna be nice here <laughs> you know? but then it was no mercy i've been, I've been on no mercy oh absolutely we, we, we'll, we'll get into uh your park hunt here in a little bit but i, I was going full ham uh like you did and and when i went on my park hunt and of course i didn't see a single freaking deer when i went that's so crazy i know that is it's the whole that whole story is pretty wild which I, i'll get to that a little bit when we talk about yours but uh what's uh what's new in uh you know blue collar white tails land what y'all got going on over there? uh well it it uh it's pretty different this year uh compared to last year um i think we had a higher success margin um you know Col colton um november 1st seems to be a pretty decent day out here at my house um it's pretty cool because i got to watch him shoot his biggest buck the same day um i shot my biggest buck in 2019 on november 1st out of the same stand Dang. so it, it was pretty cool it uh it's been a minute for a bow kill on a buck out of uh well i haven't shot one with my bow since 2019 a buck and uh it was really cool to see him shoot a nice mature one with his crossbow um november 1st so i was super jacked for him and then it was like uh i, I mean later well it was opening weekend of gun season when i mm -hmm. uh shot mine on a monday but yeah it uh it's been kind of relaxed um you know once you get that buck out of the way it feels like you can breathe finally um had had quite a bit of success laying those down um the coolest thing i got to see all year long was watching my son take his first doe on youth weekend That's and uh 
he reminds me that it's a bigger doe than what I've shot this year. So <laughs> <laughs> he's got that over my head. Uh, but he's itching to go back out. Um, I thought about trying to get him out for muzzleloader, but it's just there's a lot of things going on right now, and uh, I just I just don't know if if we're gonna get him back out there. But that's okay. Um, yeah, how did the did thing. how that whole thing play out? Didn't you buy him like a new gun for something, and that's what he used? Wasn't that what? It, uh, okay, story so was? the plan was in the off season last year. I bought a three fifty legend, and I was like, I can use this in Michigan. If I decide to go public, or if I decide to go uh, state park, we get drawn. I got a straight wall plus that three fifty legend. Everybody's talking about the recoil, how uh, youth hunters it'd, it'd be good. It kind of reminds me of like a 20 gauge um, of it going off. It's a bolt action Ruger. Um, I got the short little rancher style. Well, mm-hmm. anyway, um, that if you want me to break the hunt down. Yeah, break it down. Um, so that morning we went up to our Field of Dreams tower stand. Uh, it was the first time we actually went all in and did a food pot right. Um, my father-in-law, he was... You know, he helped out big time. He actually tilled uh, an acre with a tractor and then let the weeds come up and he tilled it back under again later. And the second time he tilled it, it actually rained that night super hard. We got three rains on it in one week. And uh, when he tilled, sorry, when he tilled it the second time, he told me he was going to. So we went all up there as a family. We broadcasted seed. Um, We had three different types of clover and two different types of turnips. Uh, One of the turnips is supposed to show up early, and the other one's supposed to hold for late season. Mm -hmm. Um, So anyway, our plan was to stay out of there, of that food plot, until uh, youth season to give my son a good shot. So um, we go up there, youth morning, all four of us. I got my wife, my two boys, and myself in my tower blind. We got like office chairs in there. It's like super comfy and uh, made it in clean. Didn't see anything, uh, you know, and it was going to be hot that evening. And, you know, where this is, it's like a 45 minute drive from my house. And Bo and I weren't planning on hunting the evening. And, you know, I was l- looking at the cell camera and I was having deer hit the scrape. Uh, it was like whatever that is September 29th or, or 26 something like that right um I was having deer hit the scrape pretty consistently in the evening and I told Mallory I was like hey Bo and I are gonna sneak out because the only stand that I have uh which is actually what we've all killed out of this year um it's a two-man stand with some burlap on there I actually welded it together um anyway so I was like, you and Waylon go get ice cream, and then Bo and I are going to sneak out. So we get out there, I don't know, 4 or 5 o'clock, something like that. I tried not to make the sit too long on him because mm-hmm. it was hot. And the whole time, you know, in the beginning, he was like, it's hot. And, <laughs> I bet uh, it was. He's like, I'm ready to get down. And I was like, well, just, I said, it's different than the morning. You got to wait because it, it's going to get better as the night goes on. I said, whereas in the morning, you're kind of anticipating for the sun to come up. Um, I said, it only gets better the longer we're in here. He's like, okay. Well, sure enough, you know, I I <clears throat> have this gun in a bog death grip in our two-man stand. If that tells, I mean, it's somewhat big, but there's mm-hmm. a shooting rail around it. So... Bo is turned around facing my grandpa's house and he's like, Daddy, there's a deer. And I was like, No, that's just a squirrel. He's like, No, dad, it's a deer. And so I look behind me, and sure as shit, there's a fawn walking right behind our tree stand. And I'm like, Oh my gosh. So I, I loosen up the vice on the the bog death grip and set it on that rail for him. Cause I was like, We're 15 feet in there. I'm not about ready to <laughs> drop this. You know what I mean? Yeah. So set it on the railing. And he's maneuvering it. And uh, I was like, are you on it? Are you on it? And, you know, I don't, I can't remember exactly what he said, but the deer was moving and it got behind a brush pile and it actually started, 
going to the bathroom and he was dying <laughs> laughing. <laughs> That's and awesome. I, so it got out of a, a shot for him and uh he was all jacked up then and anyway time progressed i was like let's just hold on here and so we're sitting there a little bit sitting there a little bit and he's got his earmuffs on still and i look over my shoulder to the right and we got deer coming behind us up the trail we walked in on mm -hmm. and i was like we're trying to whisper to him I'm like bo deer and he's just like looking at me like what, <laughs> what are you? i'm like there's deer and he he doesn't know what i'm talking about so I tell him, look over the railing and he, he picks his head up over the railing, looks over and he gets all excited. We got three deer. I didn't even know about that are walking right underneath us. Cause that burlap, um, blocked it. Mm -hmm. So the gun back now in the vice is in front of me like this. And, uh, I was like, can you see him? He's like, no, no, I can't get on him. So, those deer, there was a young one, like a, a fawn upon these does. There was five deer total. And the fawn saw some movement, but the other deer didn't know what was going on. So they ran off into the other woods. And so he's shaking. Like he's he's, he's going nuts. <laughs> These deer are like 10 yards, you know. And uh, I was like, let's just sit tight. Because like, it's still early. They didn't blow at us or nothing. And I was like, so I took his headphones off so he can hear me. I was like, let's just wait. I'm looking straight in front of us, and we had a bunch of tornado damage, and there was some trees that got snapped in half that are somewhat blocking the view of the neighbors. And property line's probably 70 yards. And all of a sudden, something looks like a log to me. And then all of a sudden, I see it pick its head up, and it was a doe. I'm like, Bo, there's a deer. And he's like, you see how floppy its ears are? And I'm like, Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah. So uh, he puts he puts the gun on because we took back out of the vice. He's got it on the front on the front rail now, and uh, these two deer started walking to the right. Well, the big one's in front, and I was like, "Are you on him?" And like, no, I was I either said, "Are you on him?" or go ahead shoot something like that anyway i couldn't finish my sentence and boom <laughs> and so he's shooting my 300 blackout which is ar platform and uh i really like that gun because there's no recoil mm -hmm. and uh he's you know i watched this doe mule kick and uh i was like i think you got him i think you got him and um so he's shaking like a leaf i recorded his reaction it was really neat to see um the, I hate that 300 round though because the hole that it leaves is so small. It was super hard to blood trail. I actually had to use, I had to go off of deer trails through um, <clears throat> like some thick stuff where mm -hmm. you could see where they're walking. And we finally found the doe up underneath a log and uh, he lost his mind. So, oh, I guarantee it. I remember seeing pictures. It was pretty cool. Yeah. I, I've heard other people say that too uh, about that particular round that leaving a, that small of a hole. That would, that probably made, made it pretty tough, especially with him, him being pretty jacked up and wanting to find his deer. Oh, yeah. And then, you know, I was like, well, did he hit it good? You know, but then I was thinking back to last year when I shot my buck with it. I was like, there wasn't much blood, but I got to watch my buck fall down. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, he, he shot right in the heart, took out the top of the heart. It's pretty cool. That's awesome, man. It's always cool to see those, those youngsters get it done. Mm -hmm. I, I, I love seeing it. Man, so I got to see, uh, what was it, last turkey season, I saw three birds go down by three different uh, youth hunters, and it was like the best time of my life. A couple of them on film, actually. <laughs> I got to uh, show you a picture. We got a bunch of turkeys in my grandpa's backyard right now. Well, I got a whole spot down here at the very end of this show for turkey hunting, so we'll get to it in a little bit. Uh, what about your bow season? How did uh, how did bow hunting go for you? Uh, it was pretty good. Um like I said, complete turnaround from last year. Last year, I think I had all the misses in one year make up for all the years I didn't miss. <laughs> uh, it was very humbling. Brought me back down to earth, but um, shot my first doe this year, like the 20th of September. It was like 85 degrees. Ooh, that's um, rough. But I took it because I had an east wind and... <clears throat> It was, uh, it was reduction. I was trying to get it out of the way and, um, 
you know, the only deer I saw at night, it was probably last year's doe. Mm-hmm. Um, but this thing came in on a string to me. I was fawn bleating just randomly through the night. And this thing comes uh, from the east, walks straight to me. It's at five yards eating grass right below me. I came to full draw twice before I could get a shot. And uh, it was the first time I got to see that exact archery head go oh, through. Yeah. Oh, dude, it was nuts. Something up. So, yeah, smoked that thing, earned the tag. Um, that was a good start. And then, <laughs> then yeah, it was like second, uh, second week of archery that opened. I laid, uh, well, it was the seventh. I laid uh, another doe down at 20 yards. Um, just absolutely eaten with that thing. I felt like I was, <laughs> I felt really confident. <laughs> That's a good thing. I mean, yep. what about, you know, uh, chasing, chasing bucks? Did you have any encounters prior to firearm season coming in? Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, we had, <clears throat> it was probably the, so it was the week after I shot my doe, Colton and I go hunting and uh, we're having some good intel on our cameras, um, just trying to stay out the best we can, trying to, you know, be as smart as we can this year, um, really just having a purpose to our sits instead of just, you know, hope hunting and yeah. going off of <clears throat> previous intel. And we get in the stand, and as we're walking back, my grandpa's like, hey, I'm going to be uh, I'm gonna be mowing the grass here. And I, I should be done about 4.45, 5 o'clock, something like that. And so walking back, you're like, all right, well, we plan on sitting right behind the house, so whatever. Um, so anyway, he's mowing, and a fawn steps out, and it starts munching on acorns, and you can hear the mower behind us, like not 50 yards behind us, the mower's going off. And my mom's helping him too, and then all of a sudden, a bigger doe steps out. Oh, no, this... This is the same day. No, this is the same day I shot my doe in, in regular. Yeah. So fawn steps out, doe steps out. They're eating together. And uh, <clears throat> about 15 minutes after that bigger doe steps out, here comes a huge buck. Big uh, big mainframe eight point. We're, we're thinking he might have been a nine point. Um, but we... We ended up getting them on camera, um, just a real nice, probably 150s um, buck. And this is October, you know, 7th. That's and we're crazy. like, so this thing comes in, right? Our, we had a west wind, so they're all upwind of us. They can't smell us or nothing. This buck comes out like it wants to check the doe. And, you know, it was first weekend in October. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> comes out like it wants to check this doe. It picks its head up, looks our way, and we think that it connected with the mower, like the mowing behind us, and he just bolted. And Colton and I are like, oh, my God. And we actually had a miscue there. Um, I guess Colton had the shot at, like, I think it was, like, 47 yards or something. Mm -hmm. Um, I thought I had the shot, and we just – we weren't expecting that at all. It just happened so quick. Yeah. Um, There was no way to break it down. Wonder what got him up on Dude, October seventh. But him being right there was like, you know, he had to have been bedded when we walked in. He had to watch them walk. You know, I mean, it it was so instant. Um, but anyway, that that instance right there broke a whole bunch of stuff open for us. So anyway, that that uh, that buck comes in. He runs out. Those does follow him. The does come back, but the buck doesn't. So we're waiting and we're waiting. This fawn finally walks about 20 yards in front of us and starts going up north to the Christmas trees. Um, You know, and that thing's out of sight. And I'm like, the mom's literally just going to leave it. Well, the mom <clears throat> starts walking the same path. And I'm like, Colton, this thing, it's going to the same spot. Like, be ready. So he tried to whip his phone out real quick to start recording. I think I remember that video. Yeah, so this thing steps into the opening. Well, it, right it, once its head gets behind a tree, I come to full draw. 
So I'm at full draw. It stops like 15, 20 yards and is just looking at my grandpa's house broadside. And I just, <laughs> I just 10 ringed it. It ran off into the cornfield. Now, what I was talking about, how that buck broke a bunch of stuff open. When we went to go recover my deer, there's a buffer between the neighbor's woods and the cornfield. And the farmer owns the tall grass, like three quarters of it. Mm -hmm. This tall grass before the cornfield, there's just bed after bed after bed after bed. So they're sitting in between the corn and the, and the woods. And so that was like putting the pieces together. Um, per, I, we got uh, permission from the farmer to shoot any deer in that field, any goose in that field, ducks, whatever. Nice. He's like, he said, go for it. I don't care. Kill them all. So, um, <laughs> so we, we actually hung a stand on that field and I encountered my number one four times during both season. He was uh, hunt, the closest I had was 70 yards. He's like one. He was bedded like one fifty. That's that's nice though that you had more than one encounter and you saw where he oh. was at, where he was bedded. I mean, that's that that's a lot oh. to know. Just and, that. And any south, any kind of south wind, it didn't matter southeast, west, or just uh, straight south. He was bedded right there, and it really it opened my eyes about how these deer are using that field now. Um, so going forward to make another point, I actually debated making the stock on him at one point. <laughs> um, but you know, by the time we got permission to hunt that, the, the cut, they cut the corn. Um, that's how I ran the farmer down because mm -hmm. someone else switched hands and now he owns it. But, uh, if I had a rifle, he would have been dead four times. That's awesome. But, uh, no, it, it was, it was good. Um, the, you know, you always, there was a couple encounters. Uh, I, I passed a nine, a decent nine pointer. Um, he was chasing a doe. It was like right around that uh, Halloween weekend. Mm -hmm. um, for some reason, I just, I, I could have shot him. I don't know how many times. I actually, he actually, the doe turned him around and they went right underneath my stand, um, right off of a, a creek that feeds the swamp. And I, I could have shot him, I don't know how many times, but something was just telling me to hold off, so I did. Um, passed, passed a lot of bucks this year. Most of them were small, um, but there was some decent ones that I, you know, in previous years probably would have shot. Yeah, I, I, I'm kind of in the same boat. I passed, I know I passed two up this year that were probably around like the 115-inch mark, which... Mm -hmm. If somebody cares about that, that's I'm just trying to give you a, an example. Yeah. But it, uh, that sort of deer in, in past, it, I wouldn't say in the past. I would say once I got excited to be behind my bow, mm -hmm. which you know, we, me and Adam talked about it last time we hopped on here. Normally, I'm behind the camera so much that when I finally do get behind my bow, I just get so, so excited oh. to shoot something. You know, but this year we switched it up. You know, it was like, hey, let's we'll self film ourselves the entire year. Uh, and, and I got a lot more picky because I knew the type of deer that were in the areas that I was hunting. So why shoot 115 inch deer when I know there's one sixties running around? Oh yeah. You know? <laughs> well, and then the other thing in the back of my mind was, you know, I, I kept telling myself, I was like, you have so much time off in November. I was like, just, if, if it ain't right now, just wait. Cause it's, mm -hmm. you're, you're going to be kicking yourself. And, you know, uh, <clears throat> It kind of got dead there for a while. Mornings really sucked. And usually this is a pretty good mornings property out here. Mm -hmm. And this year it just was not like that. Everything was really great in the evening. Um, but one of the days I was like, I got to change it up. So I'm going to go sit reduction. And our reduction zone, just very little pressure all year long from hunting. Um, they're used to all the other work that's going on. But I go up there the night before my ru my rutcation started. So it was like the 5th of November or something like that. The 4th or 5th. Yeah, it had been the 5th because 6th was, the, uh, was the, that Monday. Oh, okay. Th yeah, so that would make sense. Mm -hmm. uh, sitting all day. Did, like, oh, well, not all day. But I got up there um, 
probably 12, 1 o'clock, something like that. Um, just tried to beat them in early. Sitting all day, not seeing nothing. And uh, all of a sudden it gets down to the last 30 minutes. And I'm like, okay, great. I guess we're not going to see anything today. Look over my shoulder to the left in this nice, just decent eight point. And the genetics up there is not, it's it's never been like insane. Like um, we put most of our effort into our main property. Um, but up there, we only run one camera for 100 acres. So you get a glimpse. But, right. you know, the genetics have never really been that great. But anyway, this I had decent, he's probably 120, something like that, comes in. And I sprayed uh, doe estrus on my boots and walking in. And he's going to cross that path I walked to my stand. I'm like, oh, it's a slam dunk. So get the bow <laughs> ready. And there's a cut four-wheeler path that is in between. I'm sitting right on the hardwoods that separates like open uh, grass. I mean, it's a shooting range. Um, it's just grass, planted grass. And there's an island of woods that... Um, is the outline perimeter of our food plot. So I'm sitting on a pinch point that feeds mm -hmm. our food plot. And I'm like, okay, so he's, he's coming, like he's going to work right down this trail. And I was like, okay, slam dunk. He takes a step inside of this Island of woods and starts walking through the brush. And I, I had one opportunity to shoot him and I'm glad I didn't because after I got down that night, I turned on my flashlight and there's little twigs everywhere. Just, oh yeah. so I'm glad I held off. Well, anyway, he gets by me and I'm, I'm getting pretty excited. Like I'm starting to shake. Cause I was like, Oh man, that was a cool encounter. You know, he, uh, had his nose down. He was running. It, it was pretty cool. <clears throat> so anyway, it's like five minutes left to end illegal. And I'm like, okay, well, I guess that's all I'm seeing today. So I start to climb down. We have an, an offset hang on with a ladder stand below it. So I loosen my strap, get it down so I can step down on the ladder. So take the bow off the hook, put the arrow away, step down in the ladder. As soon as I step down in that ladder and I'm about ready to hook my bow up to my uh, my bow rope, all of a sudden I hear, tch, 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 like just running. And I'm like, what the heck? This doe flies right by the side of my stand. And I'm like... Oh my God. So I, <laughs> I, I, I hook up an arrow and I'm trying to get this thing knocked and all that. And all of a sudden, uh, a small buck is right behind her. And I'm like, I'm like, okay. And then all of a sudden behind that, I hear heavy footsteps, like just super loud. And I just see antlers and, and it was, <laughs> it's the biggest, we finally got them on camera up there, but it's a real big eight point. I'm like, oh my God. So, well, I'm about ready to go to full draw. Problem is the foot platform of my hang on is in the way of my of my bow. I can't, and he's standing there broadside, just looking straight up at me. He must have oh. heard me do something. I don't know what I did. But so anyway, he's looking at me. Then he steps down, and now it's like I can't even find my pin. So I'm like, well, it's probably past legal. And He's staring at the doe out there that's in the hayfield, which is looking back because there's a buck out there. And uh, he ends up taking off after them. I get down out of my stand, walk out, and I'm, <laughs> I'm like edging everything. And now my wind's blowing to them the whole time. I'm edging everything. And I almost get to uh, my father-in-law's barn, and I just hear him blowing out there in the field. Like, oh, oh my man. God. But that was a really cool <laughs> encounter. But, uh, so yeah. let's tr transition to, to your rutcation going into what the, the, the last week of, uh, last week of bow, uh, into a gun season, uh, cause that's when you got it done, right? Yeah. Um, we had the park hunt right, right before, uh, it was the Monday, Tuesday before gun season. Yeah, for some reason I was thinking you had a late park <clears throat> hunt, but you're right. Your 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 gun lucky. hunt was before gun season even started. Yeah, I got lucky, dude. That was that was crazy. We got picked for Kobachi in Bluffton and uh you know, scouted that out the whole nine, hung a stand. Um 
you know, when I when we drove back to the parking lot, our goal was to beat everybody back. Um, try to go as far back as we could. I'm the first truck out of our convoy that makes it to the parking lot. I about run over two deer oh, on wow. this driveway. And I'm like, oh my God. And so we park and there's two other trucks there that aren't ours. And those guys, you know, we kind of talk to each other. We're like, where are you at? Cause we don't want to shoot you, whatever. Right. And they're like, well, did you hang that stand right there on the corner? And I was like, no. And they're like, oh, it must be that guy gets drawn every year. And I was like, what? So I'm walking to my stand in the dark, and I'm trying to find the stand. I never see it. But I walk clear to the back, and I'm sitting. There's great deer sign. There's a huge rub, all kinds of stuff. And before I walk the final 30 yards, I just dump a bunch of doe estrus on the ground. <laughs> I was like, you know, I'm, I'm giving it everything I got here. <laughs> well, there was a total of two more cars came in, uh, probably 30 minutes before shooting uh, and and I saw no headlamps walking my way. So I'm like, okay, should be good. And uh, somebody actually shot like 15 minutes before legal. So, oh, wow. so I hope it was worth it because that takes some balls. That takes uh, some huge balls. <laughs> but, you know, like me and my buddies were talking, you know, how do you prove who took the shot? I mean, because once, once it started, dude, I, I had – I guess I had people close to me because I about crapped my pants multiple times. It was just boom, ba boom, you know, World War Three. Well, but right before shooting, like I had two deer walk in that I could see through the scope, and, yeah. but I, I couldn't shoot them. Right. But I was like, well, somebody shot 15 minutes. I had 30 seconds ain't gonna hurt. Um, <laughs> right when the thing clicks over, <laughs> boom. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so, anyways, some time went by, not long. And uh, I look out, and there's a deer making its way probably 50, 50 yards away from me on a pretty good clip. And I was like, oh, shit, got the gun up real quick, take a shot, dropped her, uh, reloaded my gun, texted my buddies that, you know, that was me. Put the phone away. I look over, and there's a deer standing broadside looking at the dead deer that I just shot. <laughs> so, boom, <laughs> shoot that one. It drops. Rack, it, rack another round. And... I'm not kidding you. No sooner I get that bolt down, another deer steps out. Uh, and, I, you know, I just shot two does. And I'm like, you know, this thing comes out even closer. And I'm like, of course, it's a effing doe. Right. And, and take the shot. And she ran about 15, 20 yards and died in front of me. <laughs> so you're like, well, uh, it's a deer reduction, huh? I can either take it. Three does or two does in a uh, in a buck. I think I'll just take the third doe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's what they want. They said don't yes, discriminate. Yes. So, yeah. and they don't want you to pass deer either. No, nah. and uh, yeah, two of them. Well, let me, let me break it down to you. So, all three of them, I threw up in the truck by myself. Uh, <laughs> but hey, it was three deer I didn't have to pay for, and uh, I I was more than happy. So uh, we got that. All done, you know. The one time I back, I packed my bag like full. I got a lunch, I got toilet paper, I got everything I need, and I tag out within five minutes of each other. You know, <laughs> I'll something. be in the truck waiting for you guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it was good I did because it warmed up, and I had to, you know, I was butchering them myself, and so we we quartered them up really quick, uh, threw them in the fridge, and then uh, did process them later. But that was exciting. So when it, I wanted to talk to you about these park hunts because mine was an absolute disaster. But so how many did they tell you how many people got drawed for that park hunt? Yeah, it, for our hunt, I believe it was like 65 people on the first hunt. That's awesome because mine was 350 people. Holy shit. Yeah, like I thought that – that didn't make any sense to me. Uh, and how many of, acres were you working with? I don't know. It, it was Versailles State Park in southern Indiana. It's a pretty big state park. I and, mean, for the most part. Yeah. See, this one's. I think they said it was like eighteen hundred acres or something. It wasn't that big. I got so. you. But out of three hundred and fifty people, only eleven deer were killed. And oh I'm boy! Thinking, why would you draw that many people? for if that if this, the reduction doesn't need to even really be you know scaled down that much 
And I said, well, you know, they said in the first hunt they had, they killed over 200. Oh, my God. So they, they killed them all on the first hunt. Didn't leave none for me. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Uh, that's wild, man. I think, uh, but I just wanted to get your thoughts on that. I mean, 350 people for a park hunt and a gun hunt at that. That's uh, I that's kind of what I was getting at. I think that's almost idiotic. Um, I don't know. Maybe a hundred, maybe. Uh, yeah, that's even pushing it too, because you know how these people are, and nothing against them. Some of them may not get to hunt uh, as much as we do. Uh, they like to sit right on top of you, or they oh. like to just continuously walk around, which I am not a huge fan of. But then again, it's it is what it is when it comes to these things. What I couldn't believe on the first hunt, though. Uh, well, we factored up. It was like, all right, if 60 some people got drawn, that leaves like 25 acres per person. And then, uh, there was when I shot my deer and got out of there, the amount of people at their trucks during lunch, because it's about lunchtime when we got out. Um, there was actually, there was a, there was a buck that I saw across the road behind people's trucks. And like they were eating not far away. And then there was a couple more does that stepped out. And I'm like, that was going to be the one day if I wasn't successful, I was waiting for lunch because it would just kick deer, you know, all over the place. Oh, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, we, I thought, you know, I didn't see anything. I sat till like 11 o'clock or something. Um, and uh, I was like, I'm, me and Ryan were like, let's drive around. <laughs> And see if we can even see one, or if we find another spot and there's nobody parked there, we let's go walk. Let's go walk around. If that's what everybody else is doing, let's do that for you know if, if everybody's at lunch or they left or whatever. Let's go walk around, and check it out at least. Didn't see a deer even driving around. Oh Didn't my see god! A deer. I was like, uh, is this a mythical creature around <laughs> here? <or> what? <laughs> our, um, our our one buddy that was hunting with us, he swears that after that first hunt. You know, all your deer that were on that property are going to run to private. Oh, absolutely. And then they'll come back for the, the second hunt, maybe. Um, <laughs> right. So I, I have no idea. That was my first one I've been pulled for. So, uh, rut activity around that time that you're talking about. When did you really start? What about what time date wise did you see stuff really start ramping up? Man, I tell you what, you know, I took. That's six through the tenth off because of based off of last year's <clears throat> intel, that eighth up here was super hot, and the the that first week in November or that well six through the whatever the tenth, um, I had no real good action, um, minus that one nine pointer I I passed. Um, there just wasn't there was hardly any chasing that I was seeing and, you know, guys were speculating that they were doing it at night um, instead of during the day. And, you know, my cell cameras weren't going off on the, on the, on the, um, on the scrapes I had uh, my, my cameras I had on pinch points weren't going off. Um, it was just really off year um, a, until that, opening weekend the gun season was just crazy in itself uh very different than any other year i've experienced and i i don't know what caused that i really don't did you like the gun season being a week later than it normally is um no not really uh but at the same time based on me bow hunting I mean, I put a lot of hours in the stand. I don't even think it would have mattered, at least in my area. Um, well, I'm, I might have, I might have shot my, my number one. Um, I can't remember the last time I saw him. Like, I don't have the date wrote down. Right. Um, but there just wasn't much activity. I, I mean, so I don't think it really would have mattered in my area, um, at least what I saw, uh, if I would have had a gun that week before. Right, uh, that's the day that, that what would have what would have been our gun opener, uh, the eleventh, is when I killed mine with the bow. 
There was some <laughs> guns going off. <laughs> uh, it would have been uh, it would have been our opening day of gun. Um, I particularly like the 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 gun season a, a week later. I liked it. Um, uh, I think that it gives some of the mature bucks uh, a fighting chance to breed. Oh since, yeah, you know because that it usually falls right there in like the peak of our rut. I, which I, I'm not a huge fan of, but. I will say I do believe uh, a lot of them made it through this year. Yeah, that probably wouldn't have the one of the main reasons why I don't like. Which I looked ahead next year, and it's going to be the same thing yes. due to how the holiday falls. What sucks about it for our instance is usually that's the weekend we go to Michigan to hunt at my buddy's cabin. So we kind of got blue balled out of hunting Michigan because we wanted to be here for opening day of a uh, firearm right well, who wouldn't you know what i mean yeah yeah uh so uh let's hear let's hear the story of uh of your buck oh yeah my concho he, uh, my concho how'd he get the name my concho yeah you ever see talladega knights oh absolutely i know exactly yeah. what you're talking about yeah. just how he got the name <laughs> so he was uh basically uh in the summer we never really got a picture of him until about that second week of October. So mm-hmm. I don't know if he was just a late shifter or got pushed over because of uh, pressure on other properties. Um, we're in a pretty big wood box, so I guess he could have just been skirting us all summer and we just never got a picture. Um, but we <clears throat> he was very similar to another buck we had. Uh, but you could tell when we lined up pictures with other bucks that he was not the same. Um, so anyway, <laughs> Colton, he's like my concho. That's what we're calling him. Cause we had, we had all of our other names. Uh, like the one he shot was earwig cause he had a double brow. Um, and with the other brow tine, they came together like pinchers on an earwig insect. Yeah. Um, so that's how it got its name, but we had all kinds, we had, uh, old bears kickers uh <laughs> names we we had everything you can think I, of. I personally love giving bucks nicknames i know there's some people out there that absolutely hate it but i think it's fun uh the the number one that i was after we called him mr crabs biggest seven point i ever seen in my life but he had a crab claw on the one side and That's so awesome. mr crabs but uh no my concho uh he was just a random um you know, he, he wasn't as uh, – he wasn't a frequent offender on the cameras mm-hmm. like the other bucks, um, but he was there every once in a while, every once in a while. And uh, basically, you know, going to opening day of firearm, everybody's excited, uh, did not hear one shot come out of our woods, which is very unlikely. We sat till 11 o'clock. Um, then we went to our dear widow's party across the driveway, That's awesome. uh, had a couple beers and I was like, you know, what? I'm going to sit the last hour, whatever. So the stand the last hour, um, didn't see anything, didn't hear any shots. And at least from our wood box. And I was like, what is going on? Where'd all these deer go? Colton thinks they live in caves. Uh, <laughs> it's just, <laughs> it, we, we had no explanation for it. So you know, Sunday morning, uh, decide to go out. I sit. Uh, only thing I saw was a, a small basket rack eight point that followed up uh, two does that ran behind me probably 10 minutes earlier. Um, He's just sent checking, trying to find something. And uh, so I ended up getting down uh, Sunday evening and I hunted. I don't remember seeing anything. Um, I sat over the cornfield that night because it was it was like I think we had a south wind or something. I was hoping that I would catch that number one again. Never seen him. Um, so you know, Monday morning comes and I see we have a wind switch and it's an uh, it's an east wind. Well, you know, I, the stands I have here for this property, east winds you're blowing into most of the predominant bedding areas uh there's a lot of good bedding areas 
because they logged it, um, it's probably made more of a betting area. And I was like, you know what? I got nothing to lose. Um, I, I'm just going to spray doe estrus in there about every five, 10 minutes. Just, right. just, just keep hosing. So I was spraying it into my burlap. Um, time goes by. I'm not seeing a single deer. Seemed like a perfect morning. Like I said, this is a plane in my head that, you know, I got the wrong wind. Um, but at the same time, gun season doesn't really matter too much. Uh, so I'm spraying it. Wife texts me. She's like, hey, I'm coming back to town. Do you want a cookie from the IGA? I'm like, yes, I want a cookie from the IGA. Oh, yeah, I want a cookie. So it's, <laughs> it's like it's like borderline 9 a.m. And she texts me. She's like, hey, I'm home. got your cookie. I was like, all right, well, I'm getting down. I was like, I'm just over know, it. <laughs> yeah, like I'll just come back out in the evening. I kept telling myself how the mornings have sucked lately. Uh, there's just no point in me wasting my time in the morning. And I set that phone down, and I look up, and here he is, broadside, about 25 yards. Oh, wow. And I'm like, Whoa. so I grab, I grab my 350 Legend, and uh, I, I put it on my railing real quick. He's hard quartering away, and I put one into him, and it actually snapped his leg on the opposite side. Dang. or snapped his shoulder. So he does a barrel roll. And into this brush pile in front of me, I rack another round and I'm trying to get another shot on him while he's running. Well, he runs off about, he's probably 50 yards uh, northwest of me and he's staring back to the south. And I don't really have a shot, but in the scope, I can watch blood coming out of his mouth. And, but he's facing the property, like he's facing the property line. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, if he steps any way, I'm taking a shot because I don't want him to go over there. And <clears throat> sure enough, he opens up a little like he's going to walk back to the bedding and I dump him again. <laughs> and that, that was it. But uh, yeah, it snapped his, his shoulder in half. And uh, <laughs> I mean, it was just like someone hit it with a car. I mean, <laughs> but what was one. cool is he ran through my cell camera when I shot him so you can see blood spraying out of him as he's running through it. It's pretty that, cool. That's badass. It's it's kind of blurry, but you can see it. That's so, pretty cool. Wow, oh, man. Congrats, man. Thanks. It was really cool. Well, what's crazy is he had ticks falling off of him. He still had t- It was a bad year for ticks. My dog was covered in I them all the time. Hey, jeez. <laughs> I but, never had that on the, on my buck in uh I I think it was a little bit chillier uh, when I shot mine compared to when you shot yours because opening day of gun season and that weekend and right in around there, it wasn't really that cold. No, no. Oh, well, 50 degrees or something, wasn't it? Yeah. The morning the morning was brisk out here, mm-hmm. but uh, we, had, we actually had a coyote run right in front of Colton because he was sitting in the same tree as me, and he goes to grab his rifle. And it, it seen him and he took off. He's like, the one time I don't bring my Hellcat. It's just, <laughs> <laughs> I could have got him. So That's awesome. Uh, what's, what's some things that, looking back on your season now, what's something you would change? Uh, maybe a setup or, or or something. What's something you would change uh, for your this previous year, 2023 deer season? <clears throat> um. If I could go back, um, I don't know why I'm like this, but I'm always afraid to. I, I feel like I'm bothering someone if I if I ask them for permission to hunt over something, and I I didn't know how the farmer would take it, me hunting over his land, because um, you hear horror stories of, oh, we had someone hunt over it before, and they you know left the gut yeah, pile yeah. out in the. Um, I wish I would have done that over the summer to be able to hunt that corner during when, when the corn was standing, mm-hmm. because I really believe with what I saw, I may have gotten, you know, I may have had a chance at my buck, you know, in, been, in bow like range. A, been like a funnel through there. sounds like, Oh, it was, it was, it was Chip ridiculous. <laughs> this grass was, this grass was up to our chest and they're just laying in it. Um, the first day I saw him out there, you know, um, get up in the stand and 
time's going by about the last hour comes around and i just see antlers stick up out of the the grass and i'm like holy crap so i grab the binos and i'm like it's mr Krabs," and i can barely i can barely hold my binos i'm like <laughs> dude I, i'm seeing him he's eating he's giving me a show um but yeah when i had him at, at 70 it was like 60 or 70 yards i was like losing my mind i got so desperate i actually took my 3d doe target and put that out in the cornfield and doused it and pee and i had two does come in they wanted to check it and a, a buck came in too but not close enough to take a shot that's awesome have you ever used a decoy prior to that uh no but my buddy over at buck leisure outdoors he uh he he killed both his bucks this year over a decoy and i really think do i mean even what i saw with that blown apart clapped out doe target i had like if i if i would have just had like a doe decoy i really do think that those things could play a huge role um in, in success oh for sure i want to try using a, a a buck decoy as much i would i don't want this to sound bad as much as i <clears throat> use uh the snort wheeze when i'm uh, in particular instances that you use it, it would be great. I, and with me filming everything, I could have some badass footage of some big deer coming in all bristled up, ready to stomp somebody. <laughs> uh, I think you said this earlier, but didn't, didn't you have experiences this year with trying to call deer and they just didn't care? No, not really. Um, the, the few times that I used the snort wheeze, it, it really worked. There was one time that I did not it didn't work or it didn't get his attention. He didn't care. That's because he was chasing a doe. I don't know if he didn't hear me mm. or he just didn't give a shit and he just wanted a piece of her or whatever. Cause he, <clears throat> I watched him chase her for a mi- literally almost like a mile and a half. I could see that far. It was that wide open. And I watched him in the binoculars until I couldn't see him anymore, basically. Dang. Uh, but the same buck uh, four days later, um, the big one that I shot and didn't kill. Uh, but that time it worked and what was even crazier when I used it and it worked that time, he was chasing two does, not one, but two. And when I did it, he stopped on a dime and, and turned and faced me with his ears forward. I I mean, it's on video and, uh, you know, and then you see the doe take off running again and he curled it back around and he was chasing her. And I thought, well, that sucked. You know, I could have, I was hoping to at least make him move this way a little bit. Uh, and then next thing I know, he's running full blast at me. He covered, he went from a hundred yards to 40 yards before I could get my bow in my hand. Oh my God. Oh, talk, dude, <laughs> that, that deer is going to make the off season really, really tough for me. Even though I killed a, a, a nice, respectable buck, uh, that, do, or that buck is going to give me absolute nightmares this off season. Cause at first I thought I missed him uh, and, and it, this is why afterwards I went and bought, I got, I just, actually, I just bought another pack. I bought lighted knocks. So when I shoot something on video, I can see exactly where that arrow goes because mm-hmm. like I said, he covered that much distance that quick. I, I couldn't really even zoom in on the camera. The camera was on, but I, I, I couldn't see it. And I, and I thought I missed him. I mean, I seen a little bit on the arrow. I was like, are you kidding me? You know? And then we get a trail or a trail cam picture of him and you can see where I hit him. Uh, I just hit him way back because he was quartering so hard. If I did just gave it, that's probably the one thing I would change uh, from this past season. I would give that deer another minute, minute tops. And I would probably had a, about a 40 yard broadside shot. Dang. But I rushed it because I had 160, 170 inch deer right there breathing down my neck uh, after chasing does. And it was just, it, it all drill and rush. It all happened so fast. And uh, I made one mistake that, cost me big (laughs) oh been there before oh yeah it happens man but uh that big one i was after every time i would call to him i mean i threw the kitchen sink and he did he would look but he didn't care mm -hmm. just kept moving i'm like are you kidding me you know that and that comes to i've heard podcasts and youtube videos and this and that and 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 you see all this other stuff but how deer are kind of like people you know, some get people like to be around other people and very social. Some people and some deer don't like to be around other deer at all. So maybe when you were throwing the kitchen sink at him, he was thinking, 
buddy, you can do that all you want, but I am not coming to check you out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, and I mean, he wasn't spooked, didn't blow off. It just he did not care. He was on right. a mission. So. Yeah. Uh, what's, uh, what's plans for, uh, 2024, uh, going in the other States, got any, you going to put in for the park hunts again? What's your plans for 24? Uh, yeah, I, I plan on, uh, putting in for park hunt again with the same buddies that we did this year. Mm -hmm. Um, I know we've talked about going back to Kobachi. Um, I, I think it'd be cool to go try something different. Mm -hmm. Um, but like I said, and you know, I'd like to make it back up to Michigan, but with that gun season, um, that gun season falling the way it is, I don't know if I'm going to make it back again this year, this upcoming season. You ever um, thought about going up there during bow season? Uh, well, so there's, there's a couple different people that hunt it. And, uh, like I said, I have two properties to hunt here and some of those guys, that's the only property they have. So I don't, uh, I don't need to go up there. You know, I don't want to step on their toes. I don't want to be extra added pressure. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we kind of just go up there for gun season to just have deer camp. You know what I mean? Like right, right. if we kill them, that's great. We're not shooting babies. Um, you know, if any doe is legal or like ready to go. I mean, we'll, we'll drop a doe. Um, you know, I don't, I don't want to step on somebody if that's their only property they have to hunt. And especially because one of the guys drives not too far from me up there to bow hunt. I got you. Uh, what about turkeys? What kind of plans you got oh, for turkeys God. this year? <laughs> I, dude, I hate them so much. Uh, <laughs> I thought about buying a tag and sitting on my grandpa's porch because that's where they like to hang out in the fall. Um but I only got like a week left and I don't know if I can bring myself to spending another 30 some dollars on the tag, um, for this year. But, uh, I obviously go out in spring. We'll go out in the youth, um, try to get my son one and, and maybe, I don't know, maybe I can stumble upon one. Finally. It's just my woods is so hard to hunt in springtime. It's too late. I feel like it's way too late by the time I can get a crack at it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it can be tough, uh, especially if you're trying to hunt. Most Indiana birds that I, well, almost all Indiana birds I've I've got to chase here in Indiana are all hardwoods birds, and if you get in there a certain time of the year, like you're talking about, it can be hard to chase them because it's so thick. Mm -hmm. But uh, my I haven't really talked about it yet. Obviously, I hadn't been on here a whole bunch lately, but my turkey season is shaping up to be pretty good. Um, I think I'm. There's one that's kind of 50 50 right now, which is Tennessee. Um, I'm a hundred percent going to West Virginia again, and I'm a hundred percent going to Michigan again, uh, with the mid state outdoors guys up there to their place for their camp. But I'm fired. I, the deer season isn't even over yet. And I'm already daydreaming about long beers. <laughs> 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 I can't wait. Man. Hey, that it sounds like a fun trip, man. Oh, it's a blast. Um, Blue collar whitetails. I know you. You guys are still been uh, pumping out podcasts and stuff. Uh, what's new on that aspect for uh, blue collar whitetails? Uh, we're <clears throat> we're kind of transitioning to. Well, first we got our fingers crossed for some ice. Uh, that that's probably you know one of my second uh, hard ons is is ice fishing. I I'm ate up with it. Uh, it's just it's so fun you know especially because i don't have a boat anymore right now plan on getting one in the spring but um just being able to get out on to any lake and literally hunt these fish down um it, it it's <clears throat> almost like playing a video game staring at your vexlar um trying to you know guess what's down there uh you know watching the fish react to your jigging cadences uh just trying to target i love going after big crappie um <clears throat> i love walleye too but i haven't been able to bring a walleye through the ice yet and i i'm really wanting to make that a goal this year um you know we teamed up with river city baits which has helped us out a bunch on <clears throat> you know producing fishing content to help push us through you know after deer season when people aren't thinking about deer um we have another outlet that we can 
get into and uh we're gonna do a podcast from a shanty on the ice that's um, really cool so that's it's gonna be a fun time we're just gonna run some schoolie rods and uh, a couple tip ups and hopefully video it and uh you know if we get a flag that goes up get us out there chasing after it to bring the fish up and uh i i just i love ice fishing the, every year it gets closer i can feel how cold it is outside um we're gonna make couple trips up to Michigan, do a couple derbies up there, you know, try to try to be competitive a little bit. You That's know? cool. So I'm really excited as far as that. Um, still wanting to shoot some waterfowl this year. Um, so that's, you know, that's on the list. Uh, I got a buddy that just dove in completely and bought a bunch of decoys and stuff, um, which I don't have decoys, but, uh, you know, I've, I've been working on my calling um we've gone out a couple times this year already uh just if you ain't got the birds dude it's it's tough but it's almost pointless it's almost mm -hmm. don't even go unless that's how i am anymore uh show me the birds before i even pull my waders out but <laughs> and that that's what's crazy here because you know we got that swamp and uh there's a bunch of wood ducks but again you know when are they there uh we got a lake that's within two miles of my house that the geese like to stack up on, but I've been taking count cause I've been driving around. seems like these birds are getting up about eight 30, nine o'clock. And, uh, we had a couple good flocks flying over, um, last weekend. Of course I wasn't hunting, but <laughs> they were, yeah. they were flying in this direction. And now that I can hunt that cut corn, I'm like, well, maybe yeah. we'll get lucky. Yeah. So I keep an eye on that cut corn. And as soon as they hit it, that's the time to hit it. <laughs> sure. uh what about the uh the deer turkey expo are you gonna come down again this year oh dude i want to come i want to come down so bad um especially to reunite with you guys and um i i think it'd be a fun time uh it'd be nice to do more than just one day um mm -hmm. i just i can't remember what days that stacks up on and um because that's February, ain't it? It's February, yeah. Yeah. I, it's not and it's it, it's it's not a four day show this year. It's only three day. It's only Friday, Saturday, Sunday this year. Which yeah, I'm hoping, that, that, that's not a big deal to me, really. Thursday there wasn't really that many people there anyways. I might uh this year if I get my buck back in time. Our our taxidermist, he he's a pretty quick turnaround dude. Um I know twenty nineteen I had mine back in time to go back down. Um It'd be nice to go take <clears throat> my buck down and get scored and yeah. um, put him in the in that book or whatever and absolutely uh, just to see what exactly he was. Um, yeah. So I don't know, but yeah, that is Jake running a booth. Yep, Jake's running a booth. Actually, Jake's uh, staying at my house this year. Oh no, shit. <laughs> yeah. So oh, dude. I, I don't know if I can get him deep in the bush lights or not, but I'll find out. <laughs> 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 but it'd be it's it's gonna be fun. Uh, I actually have um, tickets that weekend for the All Star events in Indianapolis, like the NBA All Star thing, like the mm. dunk contest and all that. I don't even know if we're gonna go to that now. It stacks up on the same weekend. I love working the show. It was absolutely a blast. I don't want to trade that for anything. And you know how some of these tickets are for some of this stuff. It'll mm -hmm. probably jack up on price, and I'll just probably sell them. Probably. <laughs> yeah. No, I was I was really impressed with last year's show. Um, there's a lot of cool things going on, and uh, like I said, meeting meeting you guys finally down there last year that was pretty fun. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm I plan on going that and uh we definitely gotta do the indy 500 again this year oh yeah this year we're gonna okay i'm not going with that group that i was with last time we're we'll do we'll do it right um we'll, we we'll need to go to the same out. house though i like that place what oh yeah 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 that lady <laughs> let me crap in her toilet for like for no no charge and i was like mallory give him ten dollars because i just blew that thing up <laughs> they were they the fireworks was the best. Everybody shooting all oh. the fireworks. <laughs> yeah. yeah, what? Who, who? Who had that? I don't even know. I think the guy that owned buddy? the place. Yeah, or, I think your buddy had some, but the guy that owned it had like that big box thing. Oh yeah, that was nuts. Shot like thirty mortars. Out of well, it. you know, and I I say this every time I go down there. You know, like yeah, the race the race is cool. Um. And, and it's awesome the whole celebrations and whatnot or like the pre-race ceremonies are really yeah, cool yeah. but it's like dude i 
I end up drinking so much that like, you know, halfway through it, I'm like, what am I doing? You know, I, <laughs> I, I'd almost be okay being that guy with like going down the race for the tailgate, having a flat screen at the tailgate. And like, <laughs> that'd you know, be fun. I, mean, I think would be. Uh, the tickets that I w- uh, had last year were really good. Like, badass seats the very top the very last row uh so i was at the top of turn three. Oh um, yes but this year i think i'm gonna just get an infield ticket and just kind of walk around and party oh my god can you imagine <laughs> oh i can't imagine well i appreciate you hopping back on here with me man i don't know exactly how many times you've been on the show now i think three or four times maybe even five times but i appreciate your time coming on and telling us the story of your buck and your boy's deer and everything and uh, uh i just appreciate you man yeah, no problem. I, I appreciate you uh, bringing me on. It, uh, it's always a good time, and it uh, <laughs> it helps me out too because you're always trying to fill the gaps every week, and it's it's so hard, man. For sure. And then uh, here coming up, man. Not this Friday, but the Friday after that, I'll see you up there in Fort Wayne at the what's yeah. it? The Deer Park. Deer Park Irish Pub. There it's, you go. Uh, it sits off on a college campus, and. Uh, we we play country cover music. We got some classic rock songs we play. Um, it's a about a, it's well yeah. This one's a two hour gig. Um, starts at eight thirty and uh, a lot of cool people there. I'm really hoping we we completely pack this house. It's not a it's not a very big bar, but it's a really awesome bar. And uh, the the more people we can funnel into there um, helps us with being able to come back. And, uh, I mean, la- last time was a riot, dude. We had people singing songs like, you know, people saying, oh, of course you get the people saying free bird, you know, it's yeah. like, I'm not going to play free bird, but, uh, <laughs> no, we, we have a good fun time with it. And, uh, I, yeah, it made me twice as excited since you're coming up. It, it's going to be, dude, it, it's going to be a riot. And, uh, we're actually having our blue collar white tail river city Bates Christmas party there that night. Oh, so, nice! This yeah, is so you get to meet those reunion. guys. Oh, yeah, you, they're they're a hoot, and uh, you get to meet Colton, and uh, it, it, it's going to be off the wall, dude. It's going to be that's nuts. awesome, man. I can't wait. Well, tell everybody where they can find you and uh, Blue Collar Whitetails, man. Uh, Blue Collar Whitetails, we're on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Uh, you can listen to us on Spotify. Um that that's where you can find that if you want to creep on me my name is jake colette you can find me on the same platforms uh yeah it, if you're somewhat in the area of fort wayne and you want to help pack this house on uh our gig it's friday night uh december 22nd at 8 30 at the deer park irish pub and uh it, it's gonna be nuts yeah, if uh, if you're in the area and you got that night free, come out and have a have a have a beer or a shot or something with us. I'm sure there's going to be plenty of that flying around. <laughs> oh yeah, it'll be, yeah, it'll be three sheets material. So, <laughs> well, thank you everybody for uh, for listening. If you're in podcast world, if you're on the YouTube, thank you. Hit that like and subscribe button for us. Um, check out our YouTube videos out from this year. I'm working on a, trying to get a couple more out there. Um, from the missouri the the late missouri trip and uh, i'm trying to whack a dough on film here late season but uh thank you for uh listening to us and uh we'll see you next week